Hi, I'm Dr. Rose Resendez, and I'm discussing the underutilization of show parts amputation. I'm a full-time employee of organogenesis. Everything you hear today is not the belief or opinion of organogenesis, and I'm also the owner of Restore Foot and Ankle PC. In the United States, the direct cost for diabetic care has been documented to be as high as $237 billion, and a third of that is attributed to diabetic foot disease. This equals the cost of all combined cancers in the United States. And the five-year mortality rate for diabetic patients with major amputations is greater than the five-year mortality rate of all cancers combined in a pooled average in the United States. When considering different types of amputations, we know the more proximal the amputation, the greater the oxygen consumption and the greater the impairment for mobility. Also, we know the greater the amputation and the more proximal the amputation, the greater the psychological effects as well as the psychosocial effects, which can interfere and impact the postoperative rehabilitation course. In some sources, the show part amputation has been a transitional amputation when a patient will receive in the very near future an above ankle or BKA. The infection will be removed with the show part amputation. Three to five days later, a above ankle amputation will be performed. Also in the history, the show parts was tagged as having a complication rate with the equinovarus deformity. But we do know now that if we do our tendon balancing, we can have a very durable amputation with a greater success rate. According to Foglia et al. in 2016, a paper was published which studied 83 show part amputees over the course of a few years, and the success rate was great enough to encourage considering the show part amputation as a viable limb salvage option. I wanted to share some of my success with the show part amputation, and my first case is a 61-year-old diabetic hypertensive male that underwent an elective right foot surgery in a different practice in different location. He had complications and underwent multiple surgeries after postoperative infections. No smoking history and on exam the initial time I saw him, he had an ulcer, subfirst metatarsal, which probed to bone, as well as hypertrophic lesser digits. He did have palpable pulses and he had a malodorous serous drainage coming from the open wound that probed to bone. He had no white count, hemoglobin A1C of 6, ESR of 73, and a C-reactive protein of 2.56. Upon x-rays, the first metatarsal is completely disintegrated. The proximal phalanx is almost gone. He did have a couple of digital amputations in those multiple surgeries at a different practice. MRI revealed marrow edema all through the first metatarsal, insinuating infection. We could do a transmetatarsal amputation, but leaving residual osteomyelitis wouldn't help us much out at all. So we gave the patient the options and he made his decision. The patient opted for a show parts amputation with tendon balancing, and we did the procedure to the way we know to be the most successful of outcomes. IV zosin was given while he was an inpatient. The complete infection was re removed with surgery. His length of stay was four days. He was completely healed in four weeks with sutures removed. And his statement to me at 12 years follow up was, my life didn't change at all after I had my amputation. I've been very happy with it. My second case is a 52-year-old diabetic hypertensive neuropathic Caucasian male that previously had a transmetatarsal amputation 1.5 years prior to seeing me in the office. He presented to clinic with an ulceration on the TMA stump sub fourth and fifth metatarsal with some serous drainage malodor erythema and edema to the stump. He did have palpable pulses. Blood work was taken that day in the clinic his glucose was 483, no significant white count, ESR was 70, and C-reactive protein was 4.93. The patient was admitted to the hospital, and the MRI revealed increased intensity and marrow edema in the fourth metatarsal, fifth metatarsal, the cuboid, as well as a fluid collection under the first metatarsal head. 
The patient was given all options. He decided on the show part amputation, which was performed and tendon balancing was also performed while in house. He received IV vancomycin and Zosin. He was discharged after seven days with clindamycin and Cipro. All the infection was removed at surgical intervention. He completely healed at the show part amputation site within four weeks and sutures were removed. Unfortunately, he developed an ulceration on the contralateral ankle, the other extremity which held up his fitting. One once this ulceration resolved, he was fitted for prosthetics and, sh and shoes. Unfortunately, he did expire four months after that fitting. Case number three is a 73-year-old diabetic neuropathic hypertensive male with a history of peripheral vascular disease. He experienced an auto amputation of the right fifth digit and was also previously diagnosed with osteomyelitis, which was treated by infectious disease for, with six weeks of antibiotics. Once that treatment regimen was completed, his infection manifested even worse. When he arrived into the ER and was admitted, I was consulted on the case at that time. He did have a left BKA in 2008, an examination, no palpable pulses, no palpable popliteal pulse. He did have a palpable femoral pulse, malodorous wound that probed to the fifth and fourth metatarsal, as well as hyperpigmented darkened skin around most of the forefoot. He was placed on IV zosin and vancomycin when he was admitted due to his older previous bone cultures of Klebsiella pseudomonas and MRSA. Lab work revealed an elevated white blood cell count, glucose of 372, ESR of 111, and a C-reactive protein of 17.59. X-rays showed gas in the tissue with suspicion for osteomyelitis of the fourth, fifth metatarsal, as well as the fourth digit. A tagged white blood cell scan superimposed with a CT scan revealed significant soft tissue infection as well as osteomyelitis of the fourth and fifth metatarsal. The vascular consult was completed and the waveforms were within normal limits. However, the toe pressures were only 41 millimeters of mercury. Working in conjunction with vascular surgery, our procedure preceded vascular intervention a show parts amputation when tendon balancing was performed when the patient underwent vascular intervention. Unfortunately, vascular commented that the disease could not be remediated surgically or with endovascular approaches. Postoperatively, the patient did continue to spike fevers. Infectious disease decided to treat the patient as if the complete infection was not removed, although the borders from pathology were clean. We resorted to the intraoperative cultures for guidance. Weekly blood work after the patient was discharged and stabilized were taken, and unfortunately, postoperatively, the flap did dehiss. The patient was taken back to the operating room for debridement as well as given negative pressure wound therapy. This is a photo of the end result. The show part amputation has multiple advantages listed here. I have listed here for you some of the tips and pearls from my own experience, and hopefully they are helpful. Thank you.